I'm Jo Baring. I'm the director of the Ingram Collection of Modern British Art, which is one of the most significant collections of modern British art in the UK. And I'm so thrilled to have been asked to choose my five modern British highlights from this year's Masterpiece Selection. So the first piece I've chosen is by the artist Bridget Riley, and it's called Greens and Blues with Red, Orange Highlights, and it's with the dealer Osborne Samuel. Riley is one of the most significant artists of the 20th and the 21st century, and she has said that she hopes that her art inspires us to see the joy of living. Riley emerged onto the art scene in the 1960s with what's called op art or optical art, and these are her really famous black and white paintings where she is creating the illusion of movement and she's really disrupting the viewer experience. Towards the end of the 1960s, she introduced colour into her paintings and it was in 1968 that Riley actually became the first woman to win the International Prize for Painting at the Venice Biennale. She's really interested in the role also that distance plays in perception and how we view things. And I think when you look at this work, you can actually see what she does, her technique, in that she takes collaged lines of different colours and places them together and then she moves things around, she adjusts things and then she gets a sense of what works, what doesn't work, how that changes the viewer's perception of the painting. Riley recently celebrated her 90th birthday and this is an amazing opportunity to acquire a work by an artist who is still producing exceptional things well into her sixth decade of painting. So my next work is something completely different and it's with the dealer Piano Nobile and it's a textile made by Percy Wyndham Lewis in 1914 and it's an extremely rare textile and it transports us back to that sense of excitement at the turn of the century where avant-garde and modernism was really fizzing with new ideas. The size is excellent, it's in superb condition if you look closely at the work, you can actually see that there are really interesting animal motifs in the block printing. And at the same time, artists such as Vanessa Bell and Duncan Grant were making uh, animal-inspired motifs in their work. And I think there are some on display at Charleston as well to go and have a look at and compare. So it's a really exciting opportunity to acquire something really, really special and rare. It's really exciting to see something like this. It's an extremely rare piece, which goes straight to the heart of avant-garde pre-war art in Britain. The third piece I've selected is this really beautiful work on paper by Graham Sutherland. Pick this because Sutherland is a really, really interesting artist to consider. In his lifetime, he was really celebrated, he was hugely famous, and he was actually picked to paint the portrait of Winston Churchill to celebrate his 80th birthday. Lady Churchill famously disliked it and destroyed it. I've also picked it out because it's a really interesting example of what to look for when you're buying a piece in terms of provenance. So this work belonged to someone called Edmund Arnold. Now Arnold was the managing director and chairman of a publishing company in Leeds and he was very involved in the artistic scene. He built up his own incredible collection, he was also treasurer of Leeds City Art Gallery and a number of really important works from his collection are now in public collections in the UK. Lowry, um, there's also a Hepworth which is in the Yale Centre for British Art and a, a Major Moore which is in the Leeds City Art Gallery. So just to, just to get a sense of looking and seeing and checking the provenance because actually that really adds to the importance of a work. The fourth piece I've chosen is this really beautiful drawing by Henry Moore. Now Henry Moore needs no introduction, he is one of the titans of 20th century British art. His work is held in major public collections and private collections internationally and you can see him in towns and cities across the UK. He's best known for his sculpture, for his large-scale bronze work, but his drawings are incredibly important. And actually, it was thanks to an exhibition of his shelter drawings, the drawings he did of people sheltering in the London Underground during the Blitz, that really drew him into the public recognition and he received really widespread acclaim for those. They were actually exhibited at the National Gallery in 1942, which is pretty amazing to think that people were going to see those during the Second World War. He's an exceptionally talented draftsman and actually produced over seven and a half thousand drawings in his lifetime. I've chosen this work in particular because the seated figure is really one of the key themes of Moore's work. If you think about the sculptures you know of him, our public sculptures, a lot of them involve that imagery. And I've also chosen it because if you look closely, you can really get that essence of monumentality, of sculptural form. And I really believe that sculptors' drawings have that physicality to them. They're completely different. It's a really, really special piece. And I'm finishing off with one of my personal favourites, an artist called Brianna Casey. 
and this is Bluebird made in 2002. Brianna Casey is a really significant member of the St Ives School, although you may not have heard of him. He was a studio assistant to Dennis Mitchell and Barbara Hepworth and then he started off as a weaver, a jeweller, a painter before moving into sculpture and it's just that idea of a lack of hierarchy and an ability to move between medium which I find really interesting in him. I used to go and visit him down in Penzance actually and he told amazing tales of the height of St Ives and all of them together and the conversations they had but particularly some amazing stories about working with Hepworth in the St Ives garden and studio. It was really really fascinating to have someone who's really at the epicentre of that exciting movement of modern British art. A Casey's work is really simple. It's characterised by a simple, elegant, pared down line and form but within that he's able to capture an essence. There's something really primitive about them but he's captured a real mysticism about the bird in this particular piece. 